and hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, it's one of the big ones. We've just been to see Justice League. So, it was said that when Stanley Kubrick adapted A Clockwork Orange for the screen, he adapted it based on a paperback which omitted the final chapter. But what does this fact have to do with Justice League? Yeah, what does this fact have to do with Justice League? Well, I feel perhaps that this is only part of the greater story. Well, of course it's only part of the greater story. Cinematic universes don't tend to be self-contained these days. Anyway, yes. So, going from the other DC films, I wasn't expecting much, but I was quite surprised. Pleasantly surprised? Pleasantly surprised, yes. Well, there you have it. I was going in, seeing that the tomato meter... I was going in with low expectations. Yeah, low expectations. The tomato meter from Rotten Tomatoes at a dizzying 43%. Critics were not impressed. Audiences, however, have been champing at the bit, with a 80-something percent audience rating, I think. I think it was what a superhero film has to be. You know, there was a lot of action, and, um, you know, the plot was kind of to a minimum. And there were a few sort of, like, half-backs to other things and little Easter eggs and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I, for one... Noticed a Green Lantern in one scene? Well, I think that was, like, fairly obvious that it was Green Lantern. Yes, yes. But I don't think we'll be seeing uh, this version of Hal Jordan, this universe's version of Hal Jordan, anytime soon. But if I'm wrong, we'll uh, find out soon enough. But yeah, the film at hand. I don't know that it seemed... rushed... I suppose that it had overtones of maybe Age of Ultron in the final climactic battle in an Eastern European country. I was thinking in general it had a kind of Avengers feel, but I suppose it would, being as it was a superhero ensemble film. The bug things were the same kind of cannon fodder sort of thing that you got with the Chaitori and the Ultron drones. Not that there are, you know, very much in the way of canons in superhero films, because superheroes themselves tend to be canons. Cyborg had a canon. Yes, that he did. Now, uh, massive spoiler, they do actually bring back Superman. Halfway through, so like almost like to the first hour, out of two hours. Yeah. Reports. The, the parts of the film that I disliked were generally anything of surrounding Superman and, like, the Superman supporting characters. Like, I don't buy Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I just can't see a pudgy-faced ginger as Lois Lane. It doesn't work. Well... And Jesse Eisenberg, Eichberg, whatever the hell his name is. Eisenberg. He's, like, the worst Lex Luthor. He's like a Riddler-Joker hybrid in character. He's just awful. Well, he is very thin. I, I'm not really bothered about the thinness. I mean, even though with a shattered head, he just looks like he's got a gigantic head. Just like a pineapple. The thing's crazy. But just in character, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm more into the later kind of Lex Luthor, where he was a evil business tycoon, super genius sort of person. And this Jesse Eisenberg is just like a... Giggling maniac. Yeah. He doesn't, like, smolder. He doesn't have the slow-burning, villainous intensity, the sort of exquisitely evil kind of charm. The oily salesman charm kind of thing. Of a- no, I, I would have pictured more what's-his-face who was in Iron Man 1 as Obadiah Stane. Jeff Bridges. Yeah, Jeff Bridges more as, like... That's what I'd like to see Lex Luthor more like. Very sort of low-key. Almost your friend, but then 
he leans in and he turns out that he was betraying you the whole time. Well, he's yeah, kind of more scheming and businessman and company acumen and sort of stuff. Rather than uh, a giggling maniac bent on metahuman theories and demons from the stars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm with the other characters. I kind of finally bought into Ben Affleck's Batman. I wasn't convinced before, but you know, he seems better now. And he was also almost humorous. I thought the Flash was good. He was quite funny, which brought levity to it. Yes, yeah. much needed levity to this universe that to this point has been so very, very dour. Yeah. Wonder Woman was still awesome. Fish Boy was quite good. He was okay. He didn't really do a lot, but... But you can't fault the charisma of Jason Momoa. Yeah. I mean, Cyborg was okay as well. I mean, he didn't really have a lot of character. He just kind of brooded a lot. But I suppose he had growth in terms of a character that he was sitting about brooding, feeling sorry for himself because he was now Cyborg. And then he kind of, like, became a team player and everything. Yeah. Which is quite good. Superman looked a bit weird. I don't know. I, I, as Henry Cavill had work done or something, or have they just changed the look of Superman slightly, or...? That was the CGI removal of a moustache that he grew for another movie. I'm not convinced about that villain. I'm, uh, I don't really follow DC stuff, so I don't know if he's a existing person, but... Oh, he is. He is, right. You'll notice that in the credits, they had a little um, note that the fourth world was created by Jack Kirby. Yeah. Jack Kirby, yeah. Yeah, that's about the new gods and things, is it? Yeah, I knew Jack Kirby had created the whole new god storyline, and they integrated all the other heroes and things into it later on. Yeah, that they did. That they did. But yeah, I don't know. He was just kind of a bit generic and didn't really have any kind of growth. He was just sort of, oh, I want to take over the world and destroy it because I'm a world-destroying person who goes from world to world destroying them because reasons. Yeah, well, not everyone can be a Marvel villain. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's a good step. For DC, though, looking at some of the um, tediousness of their other films and, you know, that they just had, like, a, a threat there to bring their team together to fight against. But, you know, it's just when you see some better villains in some other films. And then, of course, the uh, progression of Loki from the Thor movies. Yeah. But, yeah, I like the pacing. He wasn't too slow. Only the parts where it involved anything to do with Superman and his ensemble cast were boring. You know, the action was good. Most of the characters were good. I didn't really buy J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon. Music was okay. Graphics were okay. It's as though DC had finally discovered colours and light and stuff. Yeah, well, that was because Zack Snyder had stepped a lot back. And, uh... Perhaps it's a surprise to mention that Joss Whedon stepped in to helm some of the reshoots. Whedon? Really? After Age of Ultron? After Age of Ultron. Well, I did notice uh, much-needed levity, especially Superman, who noted that he likes living. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But uh, after taking a rather heavy hit, (laughs) he retracts his statement. And welcomes the embrace of sweet, sweet death. He doesn't die, though. No, no. So that's... They all survive, which is good. Yeah. And they have the whole Superman, Flash, who is the fastest sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a mid-credits scene. Yeah. Definitely weeding there. I know they question that kind of thing before, but surely the Flash must be faster because he has access to the speed force and can travel to other dimensions. Well, yes. Consensus is that the Flash is slightly faster. I mean, why would you have a speed-based character who has speed-based powers and then have Superman just be as fast and not have speed-based powers? In fact, why would he need to fly at all if he could just run everywhere that fast? It's just crazy, I tell you. Crazy. Yeah. I'm not sure why Batman had a giant spider creature. 
bat vehicle thing. It's not a very bat theme. That, that was spider theme. Yeah, well... Why don't you tell him he's Batman, not Spider-Man? <laughs> I'm sure somebody would. Probably Spider-Man himself. But I dare say that they'll get to that eventually. Give it five or ten years. Really, I, I haven't given my thoughts on this movie. Uh, I thought it was kind of 80s. I thought the action movies in the 80s just sort of had build-up. Then a final scene, you know, they had like slow parts at the beginning, maybe something to lure the punters in, then maybe 40 minutes of plot mixed in with character before the big final action climax, and maybe a little bit of denouement if they had time. Yeah, denouement. There are rumours, of course, that the director's cut... Uh-huh. Ran to about 165 minutes. Really? Uh, so I hear. Before being whittled down to a hair short of two hours. Uh, I think two hours was a good length for it. I find sometimes the directors cut. They add things in that don't really add much or distract from it, kind of. I never liked the Terminator 2 directors cut. Dawn of Justice. Well, the first two hours of the Ultimate Edition are still quite good, but the final hour remains crazy and not so like good. I film never ended. It just kept going on and on and on. Well, it did end because we've got to Wonder Woman and Justice League now. Yeah, thank God for that. I'm glad that film ended. Right, the ladder then. And uh, we can exclusively reveal that, for me, Thor Ragnarok is at the top of the ladder. It's Thor Ragnarok, Guardians 2, and then Justice League, then Wonder Woman, and Logan at the bottom. Oh, Homecoming, Homecoming, yeah. We'll put it just ahead of uh, Justice League, so that's Thor Ragnarok, Guardians 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Justice League, Wonder Woman, and Logan at the bottom, which is still a good film. Yeah. I'm going to go Thor Ragnarok. Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Justice League, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Logan at the bottom, because it was just so relentlessly depressing. Even though it was particularly well acted and made and whatever, just that's not what I'm looking for in a superhero film. Okay, and we're still recording, so it's time to do the e-begging, and the e-begging is in the links below. And there's a channel on mine so we'll eventually have more stuff. And you can just wire points on mine, so go on there and send him points. And look out for the Facebook group, because uh, I'll be uploading soon the uh, Facebook shorties. In and out versions of all of my reviews to date. So look out for that in 2018. But for tonight, for my producer, I've been Funky Monkey... And I'll see you at the movies. Adieu.